Yeah. Oh, recording. Good. Wonderful. So let us learn a little bit about the portion of the week. Shalom. You hear me? Do you hear me? Yohanan? Yes? Good. Huh? Are you... Uh, you hear me? Oh, oh, oh. Go message. There you go. Can't hear me. Okay, here we go. What about here? Can you hear me now? No. Can you? Let's see. Maybe that one working. I should be able to hear me. One second. This is working. Is this working? Yes. It should be working. Is it working? Still not can. Okay. <clears throat> Still don't hear? No? <clears> hmm. <throat> See, maybe we'll turn this off again. Turn it back on. Let me check over here. You hear me? Yes, good, wonderful. Okay, here we are. Let us learn a little bit of the Chumash. We haven't got much time. We can learn some Chumash here. We have a beautiful story about the. Um, the Teva, the Teva, Noah's Ark. Incredible, Noah's Ark. So God tells him to take all of the animals in the world, two by two, and the kosher animals, seven by seven, not that many kosher animals, seven by seven, and to put them all in this ark. And he says, how now he says what the measure what the measure of this ark is supposed to be. He says, so this is how you should make the ark. 300 amas long. 300 amas is the length of this whole thing. <clears throat> 300 amas long. So 300 amas like a, a, that's like a, a football field and a half, something like that. A football field is, an arm is like a foot and a half. Foot and a half is a, is a football field. And, and a football field is like, what, 300 feet, right? 100 yards, 300 feet. And this is 300 feet and a half. That's how long an arm is. So it's about 450 feet long and how tall is it 450 feet long that's the length of the table Hamishim Ama Rochva it's 50 Amas wide 50 Amas wide <clears throat> in other words one sixth of how long it is right it's 30 Amas tall so 30 Amas tall that's about like three stories, three stories, four stories, four stories. That's about four stories high. Okay, but this is also divided. Uh, and then it says that it's divided. Here it goes. And you have to make a window on the top and an open on the side. And you have to make it three floors. Tzohar tas ela teva ela ama techal anom imaylas. Rashi is going to say, some people say it's a, this, some sort of a stone, a phosphorus stone or something, some sort of a stone that shined up all the time. Because there wasn't any, any light there. It was only a little tiny window in the time, in the, this. And the door was always closed. Pesach adiva betzira, they put that on the side. That's the, all the animals could come in and come out. Also, Noah could also come you may have to make it three stories high. Three stories high. So in other words, each and every one of these stories <clears throat> we said was would be 10 amas high. The whole thing was 30 amas high, right? So it's 10 amas high. 
and each one of them was 50 by 500. Huh? Each one of them was 50 by 500, <clears throat> but only 10 almas high. The whole thing business was <clears throat> 30 almas high. So let's have a look and see what's going on here. Look, look at this. There's a beautiful kliyakar. <clears throat> so this is, so this is how you should make it. 30 amas, 300 amas long, 50 amas wide. So the whole thing was 300 by 50, right? And 30 amas high. So each floor was 10 amas high, but it had the same floor space. Okay. Rashi doesn't say anything. El and Ezra, very nice. Here, let's look at the Malbim. The Malbim brings a little Kabbalah over here. The Malbim says, So this is how it should be made. It comes to hint that Hashem will spread over the world a new world. Sukkot Shalom. The days of the Mashiach, the, there's going to be, it says, Oprah Sukkot Shalom Aleinu Valkal. We see this in the, in the Shabbos prayer, right? Right before um, Borachu. <clears throat> Right, let's see one second. Give me one second here. There we go. In the nighttime, we say in the Shabbos prayers, here we go. Are these? No, it's right before Shimon Esra. I'm sorry. Here it goes. Right before Shimon Esra. Pore Sukkah Shalom Aleinu. I'll call him Israel Sukkah. So, in what is this Sukkah Shalom? There's going to be. It says the whole world will be like Noah's Ark. The whole world will be like Noah's Ark. What happened in Noah's Ark? There was all these wild animals, and they were they were pretty small place when you think about it. If you consider all these panthers and lions and snakes and all these weird things, these dangerous animals, they were all together, and um, it gets bored. They were there for one full year, and none of them hurt one another. You know, the, the whole one year, all these uh, lions or whatever had to look at these seven juicy gazelles or whatever where they always eat, and they had nowhere to run. You know, they had nowhere to run these. And they could easily have eaten them, but they didn't. So he said, that's what the whole world is going to be like. It's going to be a sukkah shalom. God is going to spread the sukkah of shalom over the whole world. And this is explained in Tikkuni Zohar. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. I'm not sharing this with you, am I? One minute, one minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Small mistake. Here we go. Eh, wrong thing. Like the wrong one. Let's try this again. Turn to the meeting. New share. There, okay. So it says, this is how, now you can see it, right? Yes. But it says, this is how you should, it says, this hints that Noah's Ark hints at the sukkah that God is going to spread over us. Like it says in the Zohar, this, this is the uniting of Yudke, Vovke, and Adoni. God's in two names. The name Yudke Vavke, this shows that God is Mehave or Mechadesh, that God is creating the world and he's making it brand new. The name Aleph Dalet Nun Yud, this shows on the Shemir of Ashgacha. I don't need, this is God's severity. Everything has to be exactly right. That's the name I don't need. And there's even Sephardic Sidur, maybe you've seen it, you ever see it? But every time it says it's Yudke Vavke, it has I don't need written there, right? And, 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 intertwined in the words or in the little in the, in the letters to... <clears throat> essentially that that's why we're in the world right we're in the world because the whole world is made from the name Aleph Dalet Nun Yud and we're to reveal the creator in the creation but here he says in the future that's what it's going to be 
The eight and when Yisachach Avaya Al Adoni. Well, this is when we'll cover over the name Yud Kevavki Al Adoni. Sheminyana Olam. The 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 number that it comes out to be Sukkah. How does Sukkah? The name Yud Kevavki is twenty six. Here we have twenty six. Right, the middle two letters are twenty six. The name Adoni that ends up that all, all adds up to sixty five. That's the first letter and the last letter. The sixty five. See, Nun Yud is sixty and Aleph Dalit is five. Yetzir, so it comes out, a mispar shalom, a complete number. <clears throat> also, even more, look at this. It comes out also mispar shalom. Yeah, this is the gematria of shalom. How so? If you take yud and with aleph of alani, that comes out to be 10. Am I right? Hey, the second letter of God, Yud Kei Vav Kei, with the Dalid, that comes out to be 20. This is the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm this number Shalom, I'm sorry, this is the measurement, I'm sorry, this is the measurement of the, of the Ark. This is the measurement of the Ark. How so? You get the Yud, God's name is Yud Hei Vav Hei, right? So you say Yud with the olive, that's 10. Then you have the hay. Hay. Together with the dalid. How much is that at if you multiply it? Five times, that's 20. 20 together, the first two letters, that's that comes out to be 10. And 20 is 30. So this is the 30 amas of the height of the ark. Shloshi mama komoso. Now take, let's take the next letter of God's name, Yud, hey, and then Vav. Vav, with the third letter of Adonai, Adoni, is Vav times 6 times 50. That's 300. That's the length. And the last letter of God's name, 300. The last letter of God's name, with the last letter of Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, that's five times ten. That's fifty. That's exactly the height. Right? That's the number of Rahava Sachakal altogether, the number, a complete number, Imakol. That ends up the whole entire name of Hashem. One second. Even more, one second. This ends up to be Shalom. The name Shalom with a call. So excuse me. Hello. Me? Hello? Is that a mevili mashu? I don't know if you want it. Someone at the door, please wait. Just two minutes, two minutes, please. Okay, yeah, that also adds up to the number Shalom with a kolil. How so? <clears throat> what did we say? It's 300 long, right? 300. That's the shin. It's 30 high. That's lamed. It's 50 wide. 50 wide, mem is 40 with a vav, that's 46. If you count with a kolel, you count each num letter, shin, lamed, vav, mem, that's four. You add it up, it ends up to be to be uh, 50. So that's the 50 almost wide, 300 almost long, 30 almost tall, number shalom. And that's going to be sukkot shalom, which is going to be in the future. The Kli Yaker is also very beautiful, but it's a little bit long. So if you want to, we can learn it. I just have to go to the bathroom one minute. Do you have a little bit of time? If you have time, then we can learn this also.
Sorry, my friend. Here we have a beautiful Kli Yucker. Let's see if, um, yeah. It's a bit long. I'm, I'm wondering if we should do it tomorrow because basically the time is finished. What he wants to do, the Kli Yucker, as he wants to show that the main sin of the generation of the flood was a sexual sin. That they didn't want to have children and they, everybody perverted their ways. And that the Ark hints at this by the letters of Yudke, Yudke of the Tesvav Yudke. So that's going to be the whole hinting of how, <clears throat> of how the Ark comes to fix everything up. Right, pretty amazing. But you know what? Let's do this tomorrow. Come tomorrow on time. Let's do something else. Come as long as we're here. So let's do a little bit of the Alta Rebbe Shulchan Aruch. Yes, yes. Stop. Share. New share. Okay, if you remember, we learned yesterday about Bishal Achar Bishal. We learned that if you have food that is totally dry, totally dry, <clears throat> totally, and it has to be totally cooked. If it's totally dry and it's totally cooked, that even if it's also cold, you can heat it up on Shabbat. And if it's not totally cold, if it's a little bit uh, warm, warm enough so you could eat it, then even if it's wet, it has to be totally cooked, we said. If it's totally cooked, then you can even put it into a Kli Rishon, as is understood, not on the fire. All right, but it is permissible to pour from a cliche It is permissible to pour from a cliche on something that is wet, even if it is not, I'm sorry, something that is dry that is not wet, even if this thing is not boiled yet. Because a cliche does not cook, and especially pouring from a cliche for sure does not cook. Well, almost for sure. There are what we have, what we call culia saspani. There's some sort of a fish, some sort of a sardine or whatever it is, <clears throat> that a little bit of hot water, even if it's hot water from a cliche, will uh, finish it off. And that you can't do, cliche. But generally speaking, a cliche does not boil. We'll get to that. Now, again, if you remember, what is a cliche? What's a cliche? A cliche is a vessel that is or even was directly on the fire. And it still is hot. Yad so let us bowl. Some people are, are mach me even not, but let's yad so let us bowl. Has to be so hot that your hand can't touch it. And it and even if you took it off of the fire and you put it on your table, you cannot put anything uncooked in that vessel, in that soup. <clears throat> but what if you put from that vessel, you pour, pour it from that vessel into your soup plate? That's called a cliche. And generally speaking, we say a cliche does not boil. And you can... <clears throat> For sure, you can pour from a cliche on anything, even totally uncooked food, because a cliche does not boil, except for it, except for this fish, which is called culius is fine. And we'll learn other examples also of things that you can do. <clears throat> We also talked, if you remember, about a cliché in general, not just pouring from a cliché, but put things 
directly into a klisheni, a thing which is dry, <coughs> is not cooked at all, as in a klisheni, <coughs> you, you cannot put a thing that is not cooked at all, it's forbidden from divrei sofrim, because it looks like you're cooking, klisheni. But pouring from a klisheni, we said, is okay, except on these fish. But there is something in a klisheni which you can put, <clears throat> and it doesn't look like you're cooking, and that is spices. And some people also say um, onions and garlic, that those are also called spices. You can put them in a klisheni, but pouring from a klisheni on them, you can do that on anything except for things that are easily boiled. But now we're going to see there's, there's going to be a big exception over here. And here we go. We did this yesterday. We did this yesterday. We said anything that, that uh, you can cook, you can, I'm sorry, you can soak anything in a vessel that is not yad, so let us boil. Now, some people say if it's a clearish or not, but any other, even if it makes it fitting, you can pour hot, cold water on anything you want to. Good. Now what we're talking about are things that have been cooked. They have been boiled. <clears throat> and there is no bishol achar bishol. In other words, the most ex exaggerated example is you have something that was already boiled, a piece of chicken, and it's totally dry, but it's totally cold. You took it out of the freezer. Totally cold. But if it's totally dry then you can take this piece of chicken and put it into a kli rishon that's boiling, as long as it's not on the fire. A kli rishon that's boiling, you can put it in because your the food has already been boiled. Your chicken has already been boiled. It has no liquid in it. And we don't care if it's totally cold or not. It's already been cooked. And bishol, achar bishol. A thing that has been boiled, you don't have to worry about boiling it again. If that thing is wet a little bit, then we say that the liquid on it does become boiled. So that's forbidden, but can't, okay. That's talking about a thing that's already been boiled. But what about a thing? Yesh mishomer. Some people say sha'afop even though there is no boiling after boiling. But davar yavish, and a thing that's dry. Mikomakom. Nevertheless, there is boiling after something that was baked or something that was roasted. Would you have a piece of bread that you baked and that bread is totally dry and it's totally baked. Nevertheless, you cannot put that into a clearishon that's boiling. Even if it's not on the fire. If it's on the fire, you can't put anything in it ever. Or let's say you have a piece of roasted beef and it's totally dry totally dry roasted beef totally dry roasted you cannot put that in a place where there is boiling water this the, roasted means it never touched the water so again yeish me shomer some people say shafal even though that there is no bishal or bishal there's no such thing as boiling a thing that's already been boiled if that thing is dry and of course it's already Dry, nevertheless, yesh bishalach rafia. There is, you can't boil something after something was baked or roasted, even though it was totally baked. Huh? Totally baked, 100% baked. You're not improving it at all by putting it into hot boiling water. Nevertheless, it was never boiled. You're boiling it for the first time or something that was roasted. You put it into boiling hot water, a clear region that's not on the fire, you're boiling it for the first time. If that food had been boiled before and it was totally boiled and it was dry, you could put it into a boiling hot pot, even if it was totally cold. You put it into boiling hot water, but not something that's never been boiled before. It's only been baked or roasted. Shafui, because something that was baked or roasted, if you put it, even when it's still boiling hot, you take it off of the spit 
or you take it out of the oven and it's still boiling hot and you put it in on Shabbat into a clear rishon that the ad soletus boil, you put it inside of a clear rishon. Of course, it's not on the fire, but it's still boiling hot. Chayav, you're guilty. That's an opinion. Lefizeh, according to this opinion, even a klisheni, you should be machmer. From Divrei Sofrin, like we said before. In other words, therefore, we have to be careful. Lowly tain pas, don't put bread. Afuya, baked bread, normal bread. Afilo bekera, even in your soup plate, she klisheni, which is a klisheni, all the time the yad soletas pay. All the time the soup in your soup plate is the temperature of Yad so let us boil. This is so hot that you can't touch it. As all that time, you should not, cannot put it in. Let's see one second. Get, just get, give me one minute. What is the temperature of Yad Saledetbo? There's all these different opinions. And some people say, like I said, Yad Saledetbo means that you can't touch it. But there's also a temperature that's also under the suit. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein said that 110 degrees Fahrenheit is Yad Saledetbo. Huh? Yeah, 110 degrees Fahrenheit is Yad Saledetbo. And he also said that it could be as high as 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So you should be the most 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And listen, 100 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty hot. Right? You go outside, it's pretty hot. And especially if you have like a car, right? you go outside on a regular day, I mean, 110 degrees outside, that's almost unbearable. That's really, really hot outside. But on the other hand, it's not so hot. I mean, a person's bodily temperature is 98.6 degrees. So that's not really that, you know, a person is certainly not anywhere near boiling hot. You know, <laughs> Boil, Boiling hot is what, 212 degrees in, 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 in Fahrenheit. So 110 degrees, which is like about a half of that. That's, on the other hand, if it's 100 degrees outside and... Uh, you get into your car, you want to go and drive your car, and you forgot to put a, a, a sun shield, you can't touch your, your uh, steering wheel. It's very, very difficult. That certainly is Yad Let Us Pay. And for sure, also, you're not going to put your hand, you know, put your hand on the hood of your car. It's really hot. And of course, it's not getting any hotter than the, the weather is outside. You know, the, 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 the temperature outside doesn't heat up the hood of your car any more then the temperature is. So it makes 110 degrees. It's unbearable. You can't touch that, that one. So he said, therefore, if your soup is 110 degrees, but what Moshe Feinstein says, that therefore you cannot um, put, let's say, bread into it. Think some, anything that has never been boiled. Therefore, according to this opinion, it's pretty severe. What does it mean? That if you take a piece of bread and you put it into a into a clearishon that's not on the fire, the punishment is death. That's eh? pretty severe. Of course, you have to be warned and after this, nowadays there's no death. But nevertheless, it shows that God is definitely not pleased with what you're doing. According to this, even in a klisheni, you have to be machim for divrei sofrim, like we said before. Therefore, be careful not to put baked bread into your soup bowl that's Yad so let us bowl. Some people say that you should be you should really worry that maybe it's not only Midrabanan, maybe it's Mamish from the Torah and a Klisheni and a Yad so let us bowl. Why? Because there are certain things that are soft that they boil even in a Klisheni. And we're not exactly bucking what they are. It could be bread is one of those things. So therefore, according to this, it could be forbidden from the Torah to put a piece of bread, cooked or baked bread, to take a piece of bread and put it into your soup if the soup is yad, so let us put. 
And it, the soup is in a klisheni. Why? Because bread is considered to be a soft thing regarding this, and it will boil even in a klisheni. If the ad let us boil. And this, we should also have a doubt in, in everything else. And what should we do? We should be machmir in everything. In other words, watch out for a klisheni. Some people say that a klisheni boils from the Torah. With the exception of tabling, with the exception of spices. Spices, the rabbis explicitly permitted you to put spices into a klisheni, even if it's boiling hot. Another example is also water, oil, like we're going to explain later on. If you have in a cliche, you want to put water into it, <clears throat> then that's okay. No problem. So let's say you have, <clears throat> uh, uh, you take coffee or tea, water, hot boiling water. That's why some people use uh, pre-prepared tea on Shabbos. They make a really strong, super strong tea. And then they take boiling hot water from the thing, and it's you know, and it's in your cup. You can't touch it. It's so boiling hot. And then they take this tea, and they pour it in. Or if you could do the same thing with uh, with uh, coffee, you know, you you worry about making coffee grounds. You don't want to pour hot water on the on the coffee grounds or something like that. So therefore, put make the coffee before and make it really really strong, and then you can pour it into a klisheni, and liquid into a klisheni. You have no worry about. It's the same thing with all other and their liquids. According to this, even roasted meat, you should be machmer to put it into a klisheni if the klisheni is boiling. Because then we say there is bishal achar tzlia. <clears throat> but in a thing, and if there's a thing that has never been boiled, you have to watch out not even to put it into a klisheni, even if that thing is hot, even if that thing is uh, dry, whatever it is. If it's never been boiled, you can't put it into a klisheni. You're boiling for the first time. But something that's already boiled, you should never be machmer. Even in a klirishon, that according to everyone, boiling, there is no boiling after boiling in something that is totally dry. Let's just finish this one law. You can go over this also if you want to, because the laws are a little bit maybe confusing. I... <clears throat> so very simply, up, up to now, what have we said? A klisheni, some people say it boils. And especially it will boil a thing that has never been boiled before. And therefore, according to that opinion that says, that a thing which has never been boiled before, you have to worry about putting it into hot water. You have to worry about even putting it into a cliche. That's that's the opinion that says there is bishal acher afia and salia. But yesh materian, some people say that it's okay. There's no problem if a thing has been prepared. We don't care how it's been prepared. If a thing has already been cooked or baked or roasted and it's finished, then it's permissible to on Shabbat to boil it in a klirishon even, if it's not on the fire. Yesh matirim even if it's totally cold. Some people say that it's okay to take a piece of bread, even if it's totally cold, and put it even into a klirishon, roteach, even to take it and put it into a klirishon, a pot, take it that you took off the fire, put on the on the table, Boiling hot soup is in that pot. Some people will say, if it's not on the fire, you can put even bread into it. There's no bishal, ain bishal, even after a fear that's salia. Then what's the custom? Our custom is to be careful, like the first opinion, don't put bread even into a cliche all the time that's yad salat us put. But if you did it, we can say it's permissible even if you put it in the Klirishon, like the last opinion. So in other words, you have guests that come over and they want to throw pieces of bread. You take a pot off, pot of boiling hot soup off of the stove and you put it on the table 
and the guest says, here, I got some croutons that I bought. These are things that are just baked. They've never been boiled before in the history of the world. And now I'm going to put them into your clearishon that you just put on. You're going to see this is going to really taste good. This is going to be a Shabbos. You're never going to forget. You say, no, don't do it. I hold with the opinion that says there is Bishal Achar Afia. This bread has never been boiled. Don't do it. And your guest says, you don't know what you're missing. Watch this. And he pours it into your, your pot of soup. Boiling hot soup that you took off the fire. What do you say now? No, you're wrecked my old Shabbos. We can't eat this anymore. Eh, I'm never going to invite you again. No. You can say, okay, listen, you know, you shouldn't have done it. I hold, But if you did it, let's eat. We'll see how it tastes. Let's see, let's see what it tastes. But next Shabbos, do me a favor, eat by somebody else's house, or don't bring your croutons. But Bidiyevit, it's okay, you can eat it. And that ends today's class. God willing, tomorrow, 8.15, come to Hasidus, and we'll uh, learn Hasidus, we'll continue the Sicha, and again at 3 o'clock. Have a good day. Shalom. this here a note I need a secret note over here ah. okay Shalom <laughs>